Good evening and welcome to Team Talk. I'm Keelan Webster. Here's tonight's lineup. There's a roundup of the weekend's hockey action. Josh Wright inspires Jills to a win. And we jumped at the chance to test out Medway's new trampoline centre. But first this evening, Holcomb and Canterbury Hockey Clubs were back on home soil at the weekend for the first time before a winter break. Here's how their men's and women's sides got on. Holcomb's men went into their game with Reading, top of the table and full of confidence. The visitors had the better of the first half but couldn't make their dominance count. Eventually, the pressure paid though. Five minutes into the second period, a brisk counter-attack found its way to Montgomery Jefferson. Great name, great finish. The hosts found a level of ten minutes later though, Samuel Ward with the telling touch. In the final stages, Holcomb rewarded a controversial penalty corner when the ball hit the umpire. Reading's back line remained firm though, as they earned a share of the spoils. Over in Canterbury, their men took on Beeston, and after a goalless first half, it was the away side that struck first, with Mark Gleghorn finding the net. That goal proved the catalyst for the Bees, who stung twice more, with both goals coming from Elliot Hibble. His second and Beeston's third looped over the Canterbury stopper to secure the points for the visitors. Yeah, we are disappointed. I thought first half we played exceptionally well um, and had you know, three or four really good chances and I, I wouldn't have been disappointed if, if we'd gone in 2-0 at half time. But we played some great hockey today and the scoreline does not reflect how we played at all. The hockey season enters its winter break with Holcomb still top of the pile. Despite their first draw of the season, there's work to do for Canterbury, however, as they have just three points from their first ten games. Canterbury's women were hoping for better luck than their men's side as they took on Clifton Robinson's. They didn't get any. This goal made it 2-0 before the break, and after the interval, the floodgates opened. This was the second of two penalty corners to find the net. The away team were well in control and well into their stride by the time Jessica Bloom grabbed her second on 51 minutes. And when Katie Holmes got her brace four minutes later, it was 6-0. Canterbury survived the last 20 minutes without further embarrassment, but the damage had already been done. We've got a lot of work to do. We aspiration to be a top four side and if we'd won that one we'd be in a right there but yeah we've been given a bit of a lesson there. The loss means Canterbury a seventh whilst Holcomb a third following a 4-1 defeat away at unbeaten league leaders Surbiton. Thick fog and icy conditions may have stopped much of the football in the north of the country but in Kent it was business as usual. Gillingham looked to bounce back after defeat in midweek while some non-league sides looked to progress in the FA Trophy. Harry Peets has the scores. Gillingham put on the perfect performance to beat Rushdale 3-0 on Saturday. J. Emmanuel Thomas and Frank Newble found the net for the Jills before Mark Byrne added a third in stoppage time to seal a fourth win in three games. The result moved them to 15th in the league, well clear of the relegation zone, and only three points outside of the playoffs. Man of the match Josh Wright believes the club's poor form is now behind them. With this squad and this manager that we've got in charge of this club, we're only going to be looking up, and I keep saying it, we've got a great chance. We've looked a lot more solid, a lot more like where we are last year, and if we continue that, I can only see us going one way. In the National League, Maidstone lost 2-0 away at Lincoln City, while Dover's match with Macclesfield was postponed due to fog. In the Ryman League, Tunbridge could only draw with Enfield. In the Ryman South, Turn Bay narrowly lost to Corinthian Casuals. Faversham picked up a 2-0 win against Carshalton, and sitting ball made it four wins in a row with a 1-0 victory against East Grinstead. Ramsgate won 2-1 against Whiteley. In the FA Trophy, Ebbs Fleet, Hive and Dartford were all on the right side of six goal thrillers to progress into the next round. Margate will have to do it all again after drawing against East Thurrock. And finally, could we soon be seeing trampolining on the school curriculum in Medway? That's the aim of the Kent Sports Trust. And with the opening of a new trampoline centre in Chatham, that goal could spring into life. Harry Peets went to have a bounce. Sports Minister Tracy Crouch opened Chatham Dockside's new trampoline centre at the weekend. Flip Out has teamed up with Kent Sports Trust to try and get trampolining on the school curriculum in Medway. It's fun, but it's also physical exercise. And what I want people to do is get fit, and I don't get how they do it. 
whether they play football, netball or whatever, but actually come along and get fit. And what you see here, a lot of kids participating it, enjoying themselves, probably not even realising that they're doing some kind of PE. Now it's time to have a bit of fun, have a go on the trampoline and even the foam pit that they have here now at Cliff Out. So, uh, let's see how it goes. <laughs> Not too bad. While the kids from Riverside Primary School in Raynham were enjoying themselves, I was making a fool of myself. But I soon found my feet at the £1 million trampoline heaven. Right, well, they've even got a basketball hoop, so uh, got my spongy ball, got a trampoline again. Let's uh, see if I don't make a fool of myself for this one. Feeling brave, I attempted an ambitious front flip. Uh, yeah, it didn't work. That's all from us this evening. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Snapchat using the handle KM underscore Team Talk. You can also like our Facebook page, simply search for Team Talk. And there you can find more reaction from Ginningham's victory against Rochdale, including the thoughts of manager Justin Edinburgh. We'll be back next Monday with all the latest sports stories. See you then. Good night.